everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 114. On Now You Know. Brought to you, as always, by our wonderful Patreons and by Evoto this week, which supplied these awesome t-shirts, which you can get by going to Evoto. The website's right here, and they have some awesome merch, including uh, mugs, posters, and t-shirts. Yep. So check them out. And by the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott. They have two Tesla chargers there, plus two additional level two chargers. So if you're driving along in the Schaumburg, Illinois area, and you want a solar-powered hotel... That's where you should go. By the way, folks, uh, the referral code program, as far as we know, seems to be running out December 10th. Uh, please use my referral code, which is down in the link below. Um, hopefully, I get my own Roadster. That would be cool. So that's the one you'll show up to their house in? Yes. Oh. Um, so if you use my referral code, we will still come to your house in a Roadster. Uh, we're definitely getting a Roadster, so yep. that's exciting. Um, but if we could switch over to my code, because now... I am getting my car any day now. You're excited, I know. You remember that we did this interview with this company that makes the Soli robots, mm -hmm. right? And this is a company in the Netherlands. And we wanted to point out that they are doing a Kickstarter that just started um, where you can check out all their cool robots like the Bior robot. That's a, a build your own robot kit. Jesse and I have been playing with it pretty much nonstop and fallen in love with it. Yeah. And we think that it's an awesome kit for kids pretty much of all ages and yes. up to big kids. Yeah, I think starting at maybe even five or six, which is amazing because most robotics kits, you know, you have the kid has to be 13 and knows how to do a bunch of things. But this is like right out of the box, easy and fun to play with. And it's cool. It fits into sustainability because you get to use uh, items that you would normally would have recycled or thrown out in the house, like plastic bottles and cardboard boxes mm -hmm. to build your robots into whatever your imagination takes you. And if you want to learn more about it, go check out our video where we interviewed the founder. All right, it's time to absorb the numbers. So US plug-in car sales, mm -hmm. uh, this is what we're talking about here. Now this first graph, a little tricky to understand when you first look at it, yep. okay? Because it's showing you from 2010 to present, mm -hmm. but each of those bars that you see, each color is a different year. So you gotta look at it for a second, but what you're gonna start to see, what do you see, Jesse, when you look at it? It's by month. Right, it's just going up, and then the yellow line, that's this year, Right. is just through the roof. It's easy, I think, to kind of just look at this quickly and move on. Mm -hmm. But I, I really want our viewers to look at that yellow line because that yellow line is primarily Model 3. Yes. Um, which is making that go up so fast. Definitely. And so you're just seeing what we've been talking about for over two years now, the mm -hmm. S-curve, getting into the exciting part of the S-curve, that fast ramp up part. And it is going super high. Now to kind of push that point home, let's go to the second graph here, which looks very similar to the first graph. Mm -hmm. But the difference here is look on the right. It's showing us the market share. Wow. So they've just topped 3% market share. In September. Of total car sales. Yes. When we were you know, just starting off our show, I remember one month early on, we said, it's amazing. The United States just had 1% EV right. sales. Now we're at 3%. Right. And we're consistently over that 1% mark. Yeah. And it's going to only get better from here. And this is just the U.S. Right. And we haven't he even hit December. I mean, look back at that chart and you see that December sales are always higher. And that's exactly what we're looking at here. So this chart kind of shows what we were talking about. The Model 3 is that big red piece of the graph there. This is showing plug-in sales from January through October of this year. Mm -hmm. And the Model 3, as you can see, is just dominating the EV market. Right. Takes the cake completely. And I mean, look at that. Model S and Model X follow almost right behind after the, the Prius Prime, which right. is, you know, it's a hybrid. It's a hybrid, right. Now, this graph is really interesting because this is cumulative sales from uh, 2010 through now. Mm -hmm. And so, as you can see, we've got cars that we all know, like the Chevy Volt, that's in red. Mm -hmm. We've got the Nissan Leaf, which is in that light blue. Um, we've got the Model S, which is in black. And what 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 do you think when you see those curves? Like, what are the, what kind of curves do they look like? Those are pretty linear curves. So they're just continuing slowly. Inching up. So their their sales numbers are basically pretty steady. Do you see any curves on there that are not linear? Yeah, there's just about one that is very very exponential, and that again is the Model Three. 
you just see it absolutely taking off there. I think it's easy for you to get lost and to be like, oh, well, that that's so small. It's underneath all the other curves. Right. But you it's can see if it, you continue that forward that it's going to overtake all the rest of the electric cars very quickly. Yeah. I mean, it, we're, we're just talking like months away. And I just want to point out, it's, it's at the 100,000 mark and it just started. So you remember that Tesla had to get rid of Elon as their chairperson and get a new chairperson. Right. So th he's still the CEO. Mm -hmm. He still works at Tesla. They yep. didn't, they, they, he wasn't fired or anything like that. No. Nope. Um, but he did have to step down as the chairperson. There was a lot of speculation that it was going to be James Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch's son, and oh no, it's the end of Tesla. This isn't what happened. Nope. It, it turns out that they appointed Robin Denholm. She had been an independent director of Tesla since 2014. So obviously taking a director that Elon's very comfortable working with. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just give you a little background on her since she's now going to be the new chairperson of Tesla. She's leaving her CFO position at Telstra. So not Tesla, Telstra, which is an Australian uh, telecom. It's actually the largest telecom in Australia. They have a $15 billion budget. So she's been managing that. Mm -hmm. um, and she'll be leaving there in six months. She needs to give them time to find a new CFO. As soon as she's done there in six months, she'll be full time at Tesla as their new chairperson. Mm -hmm. um, she's about 55 years old. She was uh, born in Australia. She's got a BA in economics from the University of Sydney and a master's in commerce from the University of South Wales. She was the COO of Telstra, the CFO and COO of Juniper Networks, also worked at Toyota and Sun Microsystems. She says, I believe in this company, I believe in its mission, and I look forward to helping Elon and the Tesla team achieve sustainable profitability and drive long-term shareholder value. And Elon said, Robin has extensive experience in both the tech and auto industries, and she has made significant contributions as a Tesla board member over the past four years in helping us become a profitable company. I look forward to working even more closely with Robin as we continue accelerating the advent of sustainable energy. And I just thought this was interesting. Her parents owned a service station in Australia. So hmm. she grew up like working at a gas station. Interesting. So I mean, I think that this is overall a positive for Tesla. It's, oh, yeah. You know, you don't have to have Elon doing everything at the company. No, nope. he can now just be the CEO. And she's proven. I mean, she's been there for four years. She obviously gets along with everybody really well. He mm -hmm. likes her. I think that's really important because they're going to be working together a lot. So you don't want to bring in an outside director and then find out later they don't get along. Right. So I'm really excited. I think this is a good fit. So what is this about baby BFR? So we all know about the BFR. Oh, the big Falcon rocket. There's sort of that way that it's going to... Um, enter atmospheres where that it's that skydive thing where instead oh, okay. of having like normal flaps or grid fins it's just gonna have like these little little things that pivot mm -hmm. in this weird way it's kind of hard to simulate that or it, it's not hard but you want to have real world data right of how that works so in preparation for that spacex is going to make modifications to the second stage of their regular falcon 9 rocket okay and so add little fins to it that mimic the BFR Something fins. like that. We're not exactly sure what they're going to do yet, but basically they said that they want to make a mini BFS, or Big Falcon spaceship. One of the interesting things about this is that instead of just launching these rockets up in the air um, and, t and just doing tests, this will actually be used in conjunction with getting satellites into orbit. Why would a client want to pay SpaceX to test this out? Well, basically, the client is paying to get the exact same thing, which is to get their satellite into orbit. And for SpaceX, it's great because they're actually paying for that test. They're oh, wait, able so to actually launch that second stage up into orbit, put the satellite into whatever oh, so this, orbit they want. This happens after they've got the satellite safely into orbit? Yes. Gotcha. Okay, so the satellite provider doesn't care. They don't care. Um, oh, that's cool. So you get paid to test i like that yeah so that way it's it's much cheaper they can actually do these tests before they have to you know actually build a bfs and you know this is basically just to prove that their design works so when is this going to happen so this should be happening in june they'll be doing a test flight i'm going to be very interested to see what this you know big small falcon spaceship looks like all right so we just heard that track mode on the model 3 has been rolled out as of november 8th and uh i'm not exactly sure what track mode is i've read that motor trend just released that the um model 3 beat the alfa romeo giulio quadrofilio and the best driver's car the ferrari 458 italia at the streets of willow springs raceway in roseman california mm -hmm. track mode is for performance model threes basically what it does is it changes the way that the car drives most model threes are tuned for driving on city streets so they're not you know no tire slippage no uh you know 
crazy braking or, or, you know, I mean, they're, they do have crazy acceleration, but nothing is tuned to make the car drive any special way. Okay, so let's look at this video here, which is the, the car driving in track mode. Mm -hmm. And can you explain to a driver like me, it almost looks like the car is out of control. Right. This is not for your... This is, you're not going to the grocery store in this. This is, you're bringing it to a racetrack and you are racing okay. the car. So it is for... For people who know what they're doing. Okay, so I want to read this section from uh, Motor Trend because it sounds really cool, but I don't understand what it means. Mm -hmm. So, angling into the corner under braking, track mode seems to illogically instruct the rear motor to briefly overpower the rear, stepping the tail out a few degrees to target what the math model thinks is the maximum available lateral acceleration given the suspension's compression. Then it tailors that prediction by analyzing the tire's actual slip rates. Post apex, the front motor takes the lead roll, delivering just enough power to cause a muted understeer, pulling the car out of the corner as the rear motor ladles in what's needed to maintain that attitude. Wow, it sounds so cool, it's, and yet I have no idea what it's talking about. <laughs> it's a very uh, complicated uh, paragraph there, but... I'll try and break it down for you. Basically, um, when you're when you're taking a corner as fast as possible, you're doing an apex, which is where you're going from the outside of the road to the inside of the corner, back to the outside. Okay. So you're you're effectively taking a, a as least of a turn as you possibly can. Gotcha. Um, and that's what the apex is. So the apex is the you know the, the point you hit the point mm -hmm. that you hit on the inside. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different stuff that goes into that. What's important here is that basically because you have two motors on this car, the rear motor can engage more than the front motor to do some crazy stuff. So what you see in uh, Tesla's video is that the back kind of kicks out and that's to help you actually like drift around like Tokyo drift around the corner. Then after you have like post apex, as they say, so around the, the midpoint of the corner, mm -hmm. um, the front wheels kick in. Oh, and pull you out. Pull you out. So instead of uh, drifting out of the thing, you're actually uh, regaining control. out. Mm -hmm. So the front end gets, yeah, you regain control. Exactly. All right, but here's my question. A few weeks ago, Model 3 was on this exact same test track, and Model 3 didn't perform as well. It, it came in like a second or two, which is in race times a big deal, behind. Mm -hmm. And now it beat these cars. So how did something happen so quickly? So they had a professional driver get in the car, get behind the wheel, test it out, and then tell the engineers what they needed to change. And so from reading this Motor Trend article, it sounded like it was playing a little too close to the edge, is the terms that they like to use, and they, they were able to make it more consistent all by changing the code. So just by changing the software, they're able to change how the car drives. Right. No, no, you didn't have to get into the engine with the wrench and anything like right. that. No wrench required. I think that that's really interesting. A lot of the time when you're changing things about a car, you're changing like the camber and the, um, the suspension coil dampening. This is a completely different way to tune a car. Is it possible that in the future they could have a menu that you'd open up in your track mode and be able to adjust some of those parameters yourself like with a slider? I don't see why not. I think that it would definitely have to be like you know sign a little mini waiver mm -hmm. thing I, probably to do track mode you're signing a little waiver saying like i i void my warranty and and you know the, the rights to my estate <laughs> or whatever i don't see why you couldn't have a couple of sliders that would be like more loose more tight more this more that because i think that that's amazing right like the just the fact that with a little bit of code changing you can change the char characteristics of how the car drives and then win the race like that's Kind of blows me away. I think that the most impressive thing is that it's able to beat like a Ferrari. Yeah. In a in a driving race, it's not gas powered. It's completely different technology. It's that is what Tesla is so good at doing, mm -hmm. which is trouncing gas cars. And here is another example where you have a sixty four thousand dollar car trouncing a many many more times expensive car. Do you want another example of that? Uh, sure. Here's an example where Tesla has beat out the net worth of BMW. So Tesla is now worth $60 billion. That's mm -hmm. if you take the share price times how many shares. That's and the market cap. That's the market cap. And the same thing with BMW. Take their number of shares by their share price and you get $49 billion. So Tesla is worth $11 billion more than BMW. Now, why didn't we cover this like last week? It seems like, how is Tesla so far ahead? They're, they're ahead by $11 billion? Like well, if we look at the two share prices, we see that one's heading up, that's Tesla, and uh -huh. one's heading down. And oh. the reason why BMW is heading down 
Well, let's look at this. They had their quarter three numbers come mm -hmm. in. BMW has seen a 40% automotive revenue decline in its premium BMW brand sedans, sport utility vehicles, the mini compact car, Rolls-Royce luxury sedans, and the BMW motorcycles. Wow, 40%. That's led, that's led to a 24% decline in net profits. Mm -hmm. And when you see that happen to a stock, obviously the value of the stock goes down. Wow. And as Greg Westar said here in his tweet, oh, it's really simple. They could have made the BMW M3 electric about four years ago. It's true. I mean, I, you know, people can say all they want. I mean, if they didn't focus so much on making diesel cars and they focused a little bit more on making electric cars. Well, and the same thing with GM. Like, why doesn't GM spend more money on research and development for their cars? Oh, no, no, they, they do. No, no, I said GM. G GM, why don't yeah, they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom from the newsroom put this very well. He said that GM spent $36 billion on R&D. Okay. And their revenue declined by $10 billion. Meanwhile, Tesla spent $3.7 billion, and their revenue went up by $9.7 billion. Wait a minute, what? From 2013 to 2017, GM spent a combined $36 billion in R&D. Okay. Yet, their uh, revenue declined from $155 billion to $145 billion. Over the same period, Tesla spent a combined $3.7 billion on R&D, but their revenues grew from $2 billion to $11.7 billion. GM actually did spend the money on research and development. In fact, outspent Tesla. And, and what do they have to show for it? Uh, the Bolt. Wow. Pretty high-tech car. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's an insane figure. It's almost like they just threw money at the problem as opposed to good ideas and, and real innovation. Right. I, I don't know how, like, let's just be, if I had $36 billion to throw around. For research and development. Right. I mean, like, that's, what could you come up you with? Could, you could right? make Tesla. Right. The company. Like, that, right. It, Tesla is spent eh, in the order Oh, yeah. You, of could, you could build billion. a bunch of factories. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. That was just for research and development. Right. Wow. Right. That wasn't buying I no all the idea. axles. I, I and... had no idea. I thought that GM was basically sitting around like, no, let's save that money for, you know, ads. No, they're spending it. Wow. That's even more depressing it's for them. It's very depressing. It's like, what? That shows them that they're just devoid of new ideas then if they can spend the money and not come up with anything like really innovative. And the amazing thing is that in 2018, this IHS market study showed that Tesla contributed more than $5 billion to California's economy and supported over 51,000 jobs. That's just in 2017. <laughs> right, we're comparing apples to apples here, people. Wow. Like that's, what do you what do you want? All right, so what is this graph showing? One line's going up and the other's going down. Mm -hmm. From July through September, uh -huh. the capacity of wind, solar, biomass, and hydropower reached 41.9 gigawatts, wow. exceeding the 41.2 gigawatt capacity of coal, gas, and oil-fired power plants in the UK. So wait, we're kind of like at the tipping point here where one's going up beyond the other. One's going down. It's like, uh, it's like when you have two escalators in the mall or whatever. And you're and like, one, one's going up and you're like, bye, and the other one's going bye down. Coal. And Dr. Ian Staffel, who undertook the research, said, Britain's power system is slowly but surely walking away from fossil fuels and this quarter saw a major milestone on the journey. It's like, goodbye. See you later. Right. All right, Jesse. Mm -hmm. I've just invented a new power source. This is free energy. You ready for this? Okay. The Model 3 makes more power when it's towed. I assume you're referring to this video where uh, they were towing uh, a Model 3 for a mile, mm -hmm. and they got 10 miles of range. Yeah, see what I did there? You tow it for one mile, you get 10 miles of range. All we right. need to do in America is just start towing our Model 3s around. You'll have all the free energy you want. No, no, no. That's, that's how not, it works. No, 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 no. So basically, Great. if you're towing the Model 3 and it's in drive, uh -huh. that means that you're doing regenerative braking. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as if you were rolling down a hill. Mm -hmm. Right, gravity is. Trying I see to what accelerate. you're saying. We should all live at the top of hills. No, no, no. Great idea. Listen, listen, listen. So if you're if you're being pulled, then something has to do the pulling. Right. And in order to get ten miles of range from one mile of pulling, mm -hmm. that means that the the whatever was pulling the Model Three had to be pulling very hard. Right. And inefficiently. Oh, that's why he burned so many watt hours per mile towing the Model yes. Three because so the, the the Ford C Max that was towing the Model Three used like over four times what it usually does to tow, uh, to drive around. It's not like pulling a wagon. It's like pulling a wagon with, you know, someone uh, hooked like, generators up to the wheels and all of a sudden you have all this pulling resistance. So, gotcha. so it's, it, a, it's a great way if you were in the middle of nowhere and you'd run out of juice and there was like a, 
a camel or something that would you could tug the car with or you know someone brought their truck but they didn't have any way to charge your car with their well yeah could you could you and a bunch of your friends get behind the model three and just push it for a mile and then you'd have 10 miles of range probably i doubt if you someone's would be able to do out that. there if someone's oh i see because it's hard it's yeah you're not just pushing the it's car. not like a rolling it's not the car in neutral right which is mm. if you want to just move the car put it in neutral put it in neutral It'll like if you just easily. need to like move it for uh, some reason that's what the neutral i would love for. to see someone out there try pushing the car while it's in drive and see how hard it is to push it must right. be really you hard. might need like an elephant yeah okay which would be cool that would be cool cool to have an elephant and then the elephant gets to take a break right. sit in the back and uh Go for, a little, <laughs> go, for a go for a little ride. Here's one of those stories. You kind of knew it was happening, but you didn't have any proof. But the BBC, they figured out it's true. So the BBC suggests that plug-in hybrid vehicles in corporate fleets average just 40 miles per gallon when they could have gotten 130 miles per gallon. Now, mm. why would that be? Uh, well, many drivers never unwrapped their charging cables. Hint, wait a minute. Hint. Wait a minute. They drove a plug-in hybrid vehicle... And they and forgot then, the plug-in part. So they just kept putting gas into it. Yes. So it was just a, basically it was a mild hybrid with a big battery in it that you didn't use ever for any reason whatsoever. Wow. So the Miles Consultancy, which is a Cheshire firm in the UK and it advises 300 blue chip companies on fuel management, they revealed that many businesses simply use the grants they get to save on buying regular cars. They say there are some examples where employees aren't even charging these vehicles up, said Paul Hollick, the Miles Consultancy's managing director. The charge cables are still in the boot in a cellophane wrapper while the company and the employee are going in and out of petrol stations paying for all this additional fuel right so i mean this was actually grant money that was given to these companies to be said, green here you go go buy some plug-in hybrids plug in those hybrids let's you know make the world a better place and all they care about all this fuel and they just were like either okay and i mean there's a couple different ways this could go either you give it to dave in accounting and he's like it's a car it uses gas and you're like Sure, Dave, whatever you think, I guess. Just go drive it. I Go ahead. And he just goes and drives it, and he's like, I don't know, there's this other weird port thing. I don't know what don't it's know what for. what that's for. And, and then, you Maybe know. you plug your laptop into it. Right, and so he's just getting 40 miles a gallon when he could be, you know, probably offsetting his commute. He could be getting three times that. Right. Or they were just like, I know how we're going to save a bunch of money. <laughs> and it was uh, that they were going to use this grant money by the thing. I mean, they would have saved more money. Let's just be frank here. If they plugged in the freaking cars. Yeah, I know. And also another thing was that they were buying these cars for people who had to drive very long distances. Which is not the point of plug-in hybrids. They right. work better in urban environments. Right. It's better. Well, not necessarily urban, but just for short commutes. Regular sized right. commutes, not... 100 mile right. long expeditions so i mean it's just so frustrating that we have these like great awesome grants it's like that's great mm -hmm. but they weren't put to use well good for this investigative reporting right. this is the kind of stuff i like to see because let's out them and make sure that they're using their cars appropriately right and and, and just, next time just buy evs straight right, plug then, battery evs exactly if, if it was a pure ev then they would have been like bob I, well, your car isn't running anymore. Right. Your, your car is well, full of gasoline. Well, I don't know gasoline. what this thing does. Why is the interior of your car <laughs> full of gasoline? Well, I couldn't find the port. I thought it would just work. All right, it's time for the lightning round. Here we go. So this is the Power Dolphin. This is an underwater, like, submarine remote control. It has a two-hour battery, and it's, it's designed to do a bunch of things. You can either use it for fishing, so it can go and map with sonar, like, where the fish are at, mm -hmm. and you can see with the camera where they're at, and then it can release bait, which is really cool. You can also use it to map underwater... Uh, areas so you can see like if your boat's going to run aground so you can drag a life preserver out and rescue people who are just like in a shipwreck or something hmm. um it's going to be about a thousand dollars it's coming out soon from power vision and it has a one kilometer range for video transmission so you can see that far and it has a return to home function which i think is really cool this is the offshoot of all of the technology that's being put into electric cars because without sure. that lithium-ion battery you wouldn't be able to make this thing work. You'd have to have a tether. It's true. I mean, there are a lot of different new kind of technologies that are coming out that allow you to do this sort of thing. Just my opinion, but I think that a better application of battery electric uh, technology would be in this. This is a lithium-ion battery-powered tactical welder. 
So it brings 300 amps, that's about half a kilowatt of energy, uh -huh. for 11 minutes of welding. It can do aluminum and steel. You know, usually you need a lot of power for welding. Right, so you'd need to bring a generator. Yeah, you'd need a generator or like some really good extension cord. <laughs> right, and then you would need a giant welder, which are huge boxes, Right, because um, we've been learning to weld, as mm -hmm. you can see here on the Learning to Weld with Mr. G. Yeah. But you're saying this little backpack, you put this on, you walk out into, like, this guy's fixing his tractor out in the mm -hmm. middle of the field. And, I mean, 11 minutes of welding, that's quite a lot of weld. Like, that, if, if you just yeah. have to fix a broken part, like, right. that's not... That's totally within the realm. Right. I would love to hear from our viewers who do a lot of welding. Is this the kind of thing that would like help you in your work? Because this, again, is the technology from EVs right. putting those batteries into this pack. And maybe not a lot of welding. Obviously, if you have to weld all day, right. this no, isn't but your thing. But I mean, if you need to do occasional In the welding, field, right. Yeah. So what happened to this Tesla? So this was from a Tesla driver. Um, his name is Craig. And he and his five and 18 year old sons walked away from being rear-ended at 55 miles an hour last week in Illinois. So this was a Model S. I know it's very hard to tell what kind of car it was, but they both wow. walked away with very little injury. Whereas the other driver that hit them actually went to the hospital. Yeah. So a federal judge has blocked the Keystone XL pipeline. The 1200 mile Keystone XL pipeline was blocked by a federal judge in Montana saying that the Trump administration failed to properly justify it. I'll take anything we can get. Absolutely. All right, what is this uh, super looking bike? So there are a lot of new electric motorcycles coming out. I just thought I would cover the one that was most exciting to me. Okay. But keep in mind that there are more on the horizon. All right, so this is the Kimco Supernex. What can it do? It can go zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. Yeah. It goes zero to 124 miles an hour in 7.5 seconds. And it can go zero to 155 miles an hour in 10.9 seconds. It has a feature called FEP, which I have no idea what it stands for. But basically, uh, riders can always perform a perfect launch during hard acceleration. So if you're riding a motorcycle and you give it too much power, uh, it'll do a wheelie. Oh, right. Because it's uh, electric, the motor can be talked to directly. And so as soon as, uh, oh, as, soon as, as, soon it, as you have too much power, it, powers it can down. be like, like too much motor, too oh. much. Also during hard braking, FEP prevents the rear wheel from lifting. Oh, so, so the opposite problem. Opposite problem. Okay. And when riding through uneven or wet surfaces, FEP provides maximum traction. So anyway, I think that this is cool. interesting. I want to cover more electric motorcycles when they are brought to production. All right, so we just heard that the Model 3 key fob is actually now available on the Tesla website. It sells mm -hmm. for $150. Now, it doesn't support passive entry, and I wanted to double check what that means. So basically, when you walk up to your car with the key fob, it won't unlock your car. Oh, so you still have to press a button on the fob? Right. I mean, with your oh. phone, you can still have your phone on you, and your phone most likely will unlock your car. Mm -hmm. Most people have had no problem with it, but some people have uh, trouble with their car connecting to Bluetooth and right. unlocking it when they walk up to it. Um, so you won't have that feature, but for people who want a key fob, I personally don't. I'm looking forward to getting rid of my my keys. Right. But I do have a question. If you do get this fob, does it mean that it's assignable? That is a good question. Because, I mean, you can just order this $150 key fob. There's that uh, menu where you can assign people's phones and even the key cards themselves, like to unlock the mm -hmm. car. Wait, so are you talking about assigning it to a different car? I mean, I think so. Because it'd be cool if you could just buy the fob and then walk into any parking lot and just pick out a Model 3 and drive well, home. that's not... Obviously, no. you have to be in an unlocked car and probably type in a password or something. No, because I was talking about assigning it to a driver so that it would know that Ooh. like your seat and your steering wheel were in the right position for you. Yeah, I'm not sure if I, that does that. All right, well, if anyone getting the new fob, let us know. Yeah. Is this a new trailer from Martian 2? Uh, no, this is, those are two real astronauts in a real spaceship. This is Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley. Um, they are fully suited in the SpaceX flight suits. And I mean, I think... These look like real astronauts. Yeah, they do. I mean, wow. This so they're is... in the Dragon crew capsule. Yeah, look at how flashy that thing looks. Wow. This, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. I mean, it's finally we get a spaceship that looks like a spaceship. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? This is the Carson Jest electric bus. Uh, it's yeah. It's very tiny. It's very tiny. It's powered by basically components stripped out of a BMW i3. So there's two oh. BMW i3 battery packs. BMW i3 drivetrain. Can power a bus? And it can power a bus. Yeah, electric motors rock. So Model 3 is now boosting Canadian sales. So electric vehicle sales now represent over 8% of new car sales in Canada. Remember, yeah. we just said 3% in, in US. 8% mm -hmm. in Canada are EV sales. Yeah. Depending on the EV sales in the last quarter, 
Canada could add more EVs in 2018 than it did over the last three years combined. Wow. So 166% increase over the same period last year, and it pushed the total number of EVs sold in 2018 to almost 35,000 units. That's 158% increase over the same period last year. Tesla delivered almost 5,000 Model 3s in the country over the last six months, and the vehicle remained the best-selling plug-in during the last quarter, according to Fleet Karma's numbers. Now here's a map that Clean Technica put together, and it's a handy map that shows the states in the U.S. where Tesla can sell direct to customers and where they can't sell direct to customers. So blue means pretty much all good. Mm -hmm. uh, red is bad. Orange is bad too. It's also bad. But you can also see that there are little symbols within some of the states. Oh yeah, what do those symbols mean? Those, depending on their color, means that if it's good or bad for Tesla or if it's good or bad for electric car manufacturers. Nevada, for example, it's very hard for normal car manufacturers to sell directly to customers, um, but Tesla can do it because they have an exemption. You know what surprises me? We've reported over the years that different states you know, won't allow Tesla to mm -hmm. sell, and I kind of thought there was just a, a couple, like a handful. Right. But this is, I mean, quite a few states that it's hard for Tesla to compete in. Right. And yet, they're competing. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. And this week, we've got Michael in the Netherlands showing off the Scion EV. concept it I mean, really is if it's you're covered with solar panels. right if you're going to do solar do it right don't just put it on the roof and be no. like look we have solar right. like do it on every freaking square inch of the thing and make the car tiny and here's what i love they're doing it the right way they're letting people drive the car very important because you could see that he wouldn't get out of the car right. he wanted to just keep going around can i do it again right. can i do it again yeah because he got that torque he got that amazing drive and he that's what you need to sell. All right, it's time for the Patreon bonus story. So head on over to Patreon. Mm -hmm. uh, support us for as little as a buck a month. And we have so many stories this week. Right. People are asking us, like, what are the Patreon bonus stories? They're usually stories that we can't cover on the news or we get demonetized because we want to show you a video or something like that. So when you're like, well, why do they have this Patreon bonus story? It's because we want to tell these stories. We're actually able to do it on Patreon bonus stories. So head over there and check it out. We've got a really good Patreon bonus stories this week. Hey, we're back from the Patreon bonus stories. That was a good one. Was a good one. Yeah. All right, it's time for our Patreon shout outs. Who do we got this week, Jesse? We got Colin Jones, Sisai Olti Solzabolks, Alan A. Jorgensen, David Franklin, LP Larry Soders, Daniel Groomer, John Kohler, Jason Konish, Arthur Konoski, Jarek Ledenowski, Ernest J. Petrosine, Dave McNally, Henry Vicaro, Ken Seahart, and Mikhail Sobel. 
Thank you so much, guys. All right, it's time for Elon's tweets of the week. Here we go. Elon said, please let me know what you'd most like improved or fixed about your Tesla. Thanks. I do want to point out, if you're listening, Elon, we don't think Twitter is the best place to do this. It's, just because, as you can see here, afterwards, people did, like, there was one good response, and then it just fell it's into just anarchy. Chaos. It's right. just like, hey, I think it should fly. Hey, I think it's going to run. Cars hey, can't fly. I think that uh, you should put rubber bands on the tires to make them more grippy. Like, it, there's just, it's crazy madhouse. But we do have an answer, which is we told you about our friend Fred, who yes. came up with moretesla.com. Anyone can go there. And if you want to, there's already over 180 issues that have been filed. You can upvote ideas, downvote ideas. And then the best ones rise, rise to, to the, the top. top. Exactly. Then you and you can look at it by Model S, X, and 3, right. and also by Android and iOS on the app. So, like, anything you think you want to have fixed, you can at least identify it right. more. So it's Elon, really great. If you're watching the show, which I hope you are, because that would be the coolest, that would be wicked cool. Try more Tesla.com. Awesome. Just just go look, see if it makes any and sense. And Fred did this out of the kindness of his heart. True. Like this is this is the Tesla community at its best. It's very true. It's really awesome. And for for the rest of you who aren't Elon Musk, head over to more Tesla.com and you know put your complaints, your thoughts, all that sorts of stuff. All right, now, Elon had a second tweet. He said, we know we'll run out of dead dinosaurs to mine for fuel and have to use sustainable energy eventually, so why not go renewable now and avoid increasing risk of climate catastrophe? Betting that science is wrong and oil companies are right is the dumbest experiment in history by far. He went on to say, makes me so mad when smart, ethical scientists I know are accused of publishing climate papers for grant money. They earn peanuts versus their other opportunities, but give that up to help the world. But their accusers make billions by slowing down clean energy, which is more credible. Exactly. Thank you. I, I was couldn't have feeling put it exactly the same way. Better myself. All right, it's time for community mail time. Community mail time. All right, so check this out. This is in Portugal. It is a supercharger where the host left umbrellas for Tesla owners to use when they have to charge their car. Yeah, and then this is from Mrs. Isabel, it. who's the hotel owner, mm -hmm. and it's in Fatima, Portugal. And I mean, and Again, everyone should go support her because yeah. that's amazing. Tesla community at its finest. Yeah. You heard about this, Jesse. Yes. Uh, Michael sent us this story. He said, Zach and Jesse, I would like to thank you for your videos. I can't tell you how spot on your videos are in regards to everything Tesla. Today, we picked up our replacement Model S using your referral code. I very much look forward to meeting you both in San Diego and your Roadster and hopefully Semi. Four weeks ago tomorrow, in our Model S, myself, my wife, and our two dogs were hit head on by a driver who lost control and crossed over the center line into our lane. All the Model S airbags deployed, as well as the other safety features. We both got a little bruised up, but without a doubt, our Tesla saved us and our dogs from a far worse fate. Yes, Tesla really does call minutes after the crash, and again, the next day, to see if we could recommend any more safety features. Our Model S was totaled, and hence the order for our replacement Model S. Tesla has been amazing. In less than three weeks, we are back in a new Tesla. Kind regards, Michael. We could have had, Michael's with us I, still. Yeah, I mean, we could have had because one if we less had been, viewer. <laughs> if we had been like pushing like some other car brand, yeah. Michael would not be with us probably. I mean, it, you know, and when you're in the comment section and you're like, you know, looking at the different, com like imagine sometimes at some point, that person's never going to be able to respond to your comment. I know. Pretty weird. And uh, and I mean, if you're the, driving the a Tesla. The proof is in the pudding. Right. Michael got a new Tesla because yeah. that's what he wants to drive. He yeah. knows how safe they are. Yeah. This story gets me a little teary-eyed. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already gotten teary-eyed a couple times thinking about it because our friend Jeffrey, who's in the newsroom, mm -hmm. he'd never been in a Tesla before. And huge Tesla fan. Huge. He loves the company. Right. We put the word out a couple weeks ago, if anyone in the Mobile, Alabama area could give Jeffrey a test ride. Well, first of all, two of you so graciously wrote back and like, hey, would love to do that. Yep. So a big thank you to Greg, who responded to our call first. He gave Jeffrey this ride for his birthday in the Model 3. Jeffrey got back to us with these pictures and said it was the best birthday present he ever had. Wow. Just thank again, you, Tesla, Tesla community. Tesla community at the its best, finest. You really. guys rock. I know. Tearing up again. All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer question of the week. Um, this time we did a, a poll last week mm -hmm. where we asked you guys, this is a Model Y poll. We said, if Tesla does do crowdfunding campaign for the Model Y, what do you think they should give out as a perk? Now, so first I want to explain what we were talking about here. Our idea, you know, you know about crowdfunding, Kickstarter, Indiegogo. You're a small company, you're going to make something, and you need money to get off the ground. My argument here 
is why can't a bigger company do it? Right, because I mean, the biggest problem with Kickstarter and Indiegogo is that they're like, we're going to give you this thing that eliminates the rain. And you're like, awesome, that sounds great. And you support them for however much money. And then they either were like, take the money and run, and you never hear from them again, and you never get your money back. Or they try very hard, and they can't succeed, and it doesn't work. You know, and sometimes they... They oh, pull through and they plenty, make it yeah, plenty, plenty of times. Time. It makes it work. But here in this case, you got Tesla, which is proven track record right. of making awesome cars. And my argument is, if they would to crowdfund the Model Y, give us a thousand dollars to get your name on the list, and you'll get a thousand dollars off the car when it comes out, and let, we'll give you some kind of perk so that we can turn that thousand dollars into cash. Right. We asked, what would that perk be? And and that would be so that way they could actually put that on their books, spend that money on factories. on a factory, exactly robots you know, and so that forth. way there isn't this huge dip in profit. And right. everyone's going like, oh, is Tesla going to go out of business? Look at they're spending all this money. It's Be- like, yeah, they're making a car, dude, like a right. new car. Because we, as we argued, if about 3 million people got on the list, which we think is about right, then that would be $3 billion that Tesla would have to build factories. So we asked you guys, what would you like on the list? Here's the poll. It shows that uh, the number one choice would be an exclusive shirt or jacket, mm-hmm. which I think would make Elon happy because on the list was also a signed poster, which, as one of our viewers pointed out, would take about two months for Elon to sign all the posters. True. But bottle of Tesla Kila came in second. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't mind that. Um, and then we see a toy car. So basically one of those little, uh, you know, die cast models. Yep. Very popular. Uh, we've got the Elon sign poster. Summer short shorts weren't that popular. Neither was the educational pamphlet, the digital one. So yep. just some ideas there, Tesla. I think if you did this campaign, you got, you got a couple months left. You could basically be profitable for the year. And have all the money you need for the for the Model Y factory. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying. And as Michael Seeley said, here's an idea that didn't appear on my poll. He said, poster, really? How about free use of supercharger? I mean, maybe that's a good perk, too. All right, it's time for supercharger reviews. Let's see what we got. How's it going, Zach and Jesse? This is Zach here at the supercharger station at Universal in Sand Lake. It looks like there's six superchargers here. And there's a bunch of restaurants and amenities. It's close to I-4 as well as uh, hotels and everything behind me. Um, If I were to rate this supercharger, I'd probably give it a seven because it's in a very busy intersection, but that's a good thing too because it's near I-4 and a turnpike. Thanks. Good morning, Zach and Jesse. This is Scott of Scott and Mary. We're at the Hilton Garden Inn in Columbus, Georgia. And uh, we come here because they have these destination uh, Tesla chargers. Actually, there's, uh, there's six stalls here and each of those posts has a Tesla charger on it and then whatever that other one is that starts with a J. I guess I should know what it is, but I don't. Um, Hilton Garden Inn is nice uh, in that uh, there's there's a supercharger coming to Columbus, but it's not open yet. And it's quite a distance between the Auburn supercharger and the Tifton supercharger that we travel between, uh, especially when we're pulling the trailer, which is over there. There's Spouse coming back. So, uh, you guys like to have the destination chargers, um, Hilton Garden Inn in Columbus, Georgia. So now you know. Hey, Zach and Jesse, uh, and now you know. I am at the Fashion Outlets of Chicago um, in Rosemont. Um, I am at the Superchargers, uh, which they just installed, but I have not seen this on the map, so they updated the maps. And there are uh, 10 stalls here. Um, and it's on, it was a little tricky to find, actually, because this is uh, actually on the the uh, the sixth floor or the seventh floor or so um, at the Fashion Outlets of Chicago. So imagine just coming here on a busy uh, busy month where everyone's trying to shop for Black for Black Friday deals uh, pre Black Friday. You're not really able to tell, but being the Fashion Outlets, Fashion Outlets of Chicago, there are plenty of stores here. So obviously, you come here, park. A lot of people really don't park on this top floor e- either. So this is usually. Again, on a busy month like November, where it's pre-Black Friday deals, um, is actually pretty empty up here too, which is convenient. And then obviously there's a Fashion House of Chicago with a ton of stores you can go to, ton of food, ton of everything. So with being the fact that they have over uh, over 10 stalls and on the top floor where a lot of people don't park, um, there's some other Volta chargers actually on the first floor, which is completely booked. And there's only two of them, but they're free. Um, this is actually a good find. It's a good gem right now until it gets too popular. So there you go. Now you know. I rate this. Um, I road rate this uh, essentially a 10 out of 10. Hi, Zach and Jesse. This is Henry from Fonjirola. Love what you're doing. Keep up the good work. I'm standing here in the subterranean parking space of El Corte Inglés, which is a huge 
um, supermarket chain in Spain and we have three destination chargers here very small um, in the background um, not many Teslas yet driving around in this zone it's a small town uh, but uh, just to keep you updated about that um, possibility of charging here in this small town in the southern part of Spain, Andalucía. Um, I give it a 2 out of 10. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Man. Always happy to see what's coming in for supercharger reviews. So sure. many awesome, pleasant people out there in the world doing this for the Tesla community. Yeah, it's it's just it's nice just... to see them all around the world. I love it. All right, what do we got for new superchargers this week? This week we have number 321 in China is the two stall in Hong Kong at the Landmark North. And we've got the 10 stall Urban in Rosemont, Illinois. Number 577 in the US and number 1,382 in the world is the 10 stall at Buford, Georgia. Nice. It's time for Be Free. That's businesses for rewarding Elon yeah, employees. We, and we jumped up to 74 yeah, this week. Yelling at you last week worked. Yes. So we're going to keep yelling at you. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Keep we're adding those businesses. to 100. And then once we get to 100, we'll go to 1,000. And then we'll go to a billion. Jesse, this company's in New Zealand. Wow. They will give 10% off the following services. Video editing, photo editing, logo animation, graphic design, business and professional services. Um, this is really cool. KVK Studios. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some Elon employees that need these services. Yeah. Next time you're in, in New Zealand, look well, them up. I mean, it's digital. Oh, so that's you right. You just, don't even have to go there. You don't even have to send a letter. It. You can send an email. Let's talk about a past video. We just had this one come out on Saturday. Do you want to know how to weld? Uh, well, I was in that video. Oh, so you already learned. So you can see me learn how to weld in this video. And it's we a had, lot of fun. Mr. G drove all the way up from uh, New Jersey, He's all the way to Massachusetts. He's a teacher. To teach us how to weld. It, Not just like one way of how to weld. We learned... Yeah. Uh, spot, welding. spot welding stick welding mig welding yeah we have that all in the video so if you're interested really check it out it's fun just a fun yeah, quick even if you're never gonna thing. weld it's still there's cool. a lot of learning that goes on even if you're yeah. not there with us you're right. still you're watching it fun for kids great teacher great teacher all right time for our patreon giveaway let's get the big giant all thing right. of thinginess okay it's the patreon giveaway oh so this week our friends at Avoto are giving away uh, either a t-shirt or a mug or a poster. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't win this week, if you want some of these cool t-shirts, head over to Avoto. Here's the link. Um, and let's see who our winner is this week. Who's our winner? We have Maria Perry Garbo. Nice. Congratulations. Goes you are going to get a Evoto t-shirt, mug, or poster. poster. The choice is yours. Yes. And you get in there, by the way, by being one of our awesome Patreons. I mean, you're seeing the list of Patreons scroll by here. Mm -hmm. um, thousands. Can I say thousands? We're not at 2,000 yet, but... So can you still say thousands? Can you say hundreds. 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 Scores. Of scores and scores. Dozens and dozens of Patreons who make our life possible because they fund the show. And you yeah. could become one of them. Uh, for a little a buck a month, you're gonna get into that vat. You're also gonna get to be able to see all of our, our cool bonus videos. So that's cool. Also, I wanna remind you that we've definitely gotten a Roadster. Yes. Okay, so that's for sure. That is So we're here. gonna be visiting people in Roadsters. If you use my referral code now, yes. we will come visit you in a Roadster. Yes. So we're still doing it. It's still happening. Right. We're still crazy. Yep. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to you it. You know what? You know, when we didn't know for sure that we we're getting the Roadster, it was just like a dream. Like, will enough people do it? Right. Now that it's become a reality, it's now I, I sometimes dream about it. I, I'm a little like. I'm not scared. I'm a little scared I'm, about driving it. Okay. A little, I'm a little scared I'm about just that. like naturally okay. scared about driving something that can do what no other thing can do. True. I mean, it's gonna be like being on an aircraft carrier, like catapult thing. Like that's what it's gonna feel like. Right? I hope there's a chill mode for just normal. I think there will driving. be. Yeah, okay. sure. Why not? Sure. So <laughs> that would make me feel better for just normal. But but yeah, no. I, I that's the only. Scary I hope part. you know what I hope. There's not just a chill mode. There's like an ice cold mode. What does ice cold mode do? It's what's cooler than being cool. Ice cold. I'm so just it saying slower. it's even slower. I hope it has a force field. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> well, well, with the SpaceX package, let's think That's about That's what for I'm a second. saying. Turn you that could, on. You could, and if the nozzles were pointed blow out. Blow people away. You could. It seems like a bad idea. It does, but I'm just saying it'd be cool <laughs> if you had it. That would be. Well, anyway, we're going to have to 
end the show, I guess. But thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Hit the like button. It makes, it like shares this video with other people on the internet. Mm -hmm. YouTube is like, algorithm like will share with other people. And then it'll be in someone's suggested video and they're gonna be like, what, Tesla? I have never heard of this. Hopefully and they don't talk like that, because that's weird. But <laughs> then they will hopefully click on the video, get educated about this stuff. And, and they don't have the to watch world. it as a video. You can listen as a podcast. We're on Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn. So you can listen in your car. A lot of people do. Yep. That's, that's fine. And if you're not going to buy a Tesla, because you either can't afford it or you don't want to, you can sign up with my referral code to the newsletter, and you'll win a chance to race the semi. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're already doing that too. Yeah. So I'm going to smoke you, unfortunately. Sorry. Don't flip it, whatever you do. Yeah. Um, and if you want to use our Amazon affiliate code, a lot of people write to us and we're like, Are, is it sure? Is that working? It's working. It's working. It's raising it's money for the show, which very is very helpful. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who's used it. Like, I really appreciate really, it. Really, thank you so much. Yeah. And, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Your views are super important and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that yeah. it makes your life a little bit easier because you'll get the you'll like you won't get the notifications unless you hit the bell button which is another thing another hoop that youtube has you jump through in order to see uh, our content and don't forget to support our our sponsors we've got the marriott hotel in schaumburg illinois which is solar powered and we've got our buddies over at Avoto selling awesome cool gear and if you're in montreal and you need to ride a tesla of course you do then call I mean, up. it could save your life. Yes, exactly. Those Montreal drivers, I'm just saying. Are they a little crazy? Eh, they're like yeah. they're like any city drivers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, call up a Voto, really friendly, and rent a Tesla. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now you know.